My name is Kurt Westerman, and I'm interviewing Charles Cooper. At his home. At his home. In Wiener, Arkansas. In Wiener, Arkansas. <laughs> The date is one seventeen o eight. What is your full name? Charles Alfred Cooper. Mm. Where uh, were you named after, after anyone? Yeah, I was named after both my grandpas, Charlie Cooper and Alfred Ingram. Where were you born? I was born in Wiener. Did you ever have a nickname? How did you get it? Uh, my wife calls me Charlie once in a while, and that's about it. Do you know where your ancestors were from? My, <clears throat> on my mother's side, they were from Illinois, here in Illinois, and my Dad's side, they was from uh, Ohio. I really don't know what town, but Ohio. Um, where did that, oh wait, hold on. Uh, okay. Where did they settle, and what did they do there? Uh, they settled across by over what they call Cooper and Haynes area. Uh, both my in-laws were farmers. They had little crops and cattle and horses and stuff. My dad was raised just below Cooper and Haynes store, about two miles, and my mother's side, Grandpa and Grandpa Ingram, was about a quarter of a mile east of Cooper and Haynes. What did they do? Did they? They was farmers. What, what did they farm? They had, uh, I think, a little corn, a little cotton back then. You know, just small areas. Just mostly had a lot of livestock. They lived on livestock back in those days. Dad told me about down south where they lived. There, about two miles south of Cooper and Haynes, they could take a post mall and drive a well about 45 feet. They had water. Right now, it's about 160 feet to water. But uh, that's Dad. Back in, I remember the old lower road was the only way you could get into Cooper and Haynes. They didn't have 214 back then, and I can remember walking from Cooper and Haynes east to my grandpa and grandma Ingram's place. The gumbo was so heavy they would build up on my feet. I couldn't hardly walk. And I remember when they put 214 in, us kids used to go down to where the first bridge is on 214 going east, go swimming there. Did you ever see any snakes? Ma'am? Did you ever see any snakes? No, not many back then. Didn't pay no attention to them. Okay. <laughs> but you know they was there in them old swamps at that time. That was a swampy area. That bridge back there just down where your daddy farmed that first bridge there, well, had just a swimming hole there. We'd go to, on the bow and fish at night and everything else. It's just, that's about all we had to do back in those days. But both parents were just small farmers. They just raised little stuff to eat. Um, is it okay if I talk to you about your parents? About my parents? I'm going to talk to you about your parents. Okay. Well, my dad and mother farmed about all their life. Dad, married mother, said he used to walk from home up to Cooper and Haynes and date her up there. They'd go have dances and stuff. Married mother in 37. I was born in 38 out here about six miles east of Wiener. Dad was working for Mr. Wolford, C.O. Wolford at the time. Dad worked for him for several years and finally 
dad went in business farming with him. And I, dad farmed up till, I guess, 89. Dad's had two open heart surgeries, but he's in great shape now. He's 90. I lost my mother in 79. She was, uh, we was fishing down at Lake Okeechobee. My mother had a aneurysm and passed away in Florida. But they've been farming. That's all we've done. We've farmed all our life. And my mother, she was a great cook. We'd always used to, we'd harvest together. My uncles, Uncle Roy and Uncle Earl, and wherever we was harvesting, why well, that's where we eat dinner. The ladies always cook dinner, and they would be ten or twelve for dinner ever during harvest. And we'd be running six, seven combines, and had a pretty good crew back in those days. We don't do much of that anymore. Um, can you tell me a story about your mother when you were young? When you were a boy. Well, mother always cooked. She always had a done a lot of cooking. And I can remember we she'd cook a she had a deep well in her stove. She cooked twenty five pounds of beans every week. We always had beans. Dad liked beans and mother'd always cook beans. Mother was always good to me. She never did spank me that I know of. She hollered at me a time or two. Dad done all the whooping. <laughs> But, uh, she would cook a what now, did you say, a pound of beans? 25 pound of beans a week. She had a deep well. And what we, is a deep well? That was in a stove. Uh, you, oh, they had a pot, like kind of like crock pots, only it was built down in the stove. Had a liner to go in and out, just like crock pots do. We call it a deep well, and she'd cook that thing full of beans every day. We eat beans twice a day supper and dinner. She was always good to me and loved kids. Mother and dad loved to dance and I guess I inherited that from them. I loved to dance too. But uh, as far as I know, mother and dad never did have no problems. Years ago, my Uncle Earl was in the Navy and Aunt Ellen and her family stayed with us. And uh, that's our house burnt in 40 Seven, I believe. I'm not sure about the house burning. But Aunt Ellen and all the family was there, and Dad and most Uncle Earl Walker and all them was up Hood Lake fishing. And the house, hot water heater caught on fire in the bathroom, and we lived down by the airport just about two miles south of Wiener at that time. Had a two-story house, and it burnt. We moved, then we moved out here to the old Burger House, just outside of town. Went to school there, and that's where I, I had the mumps when we lived there. I remember that, and laying in the bed in the summertime, and it's hot, and the mumps, and had the mumps. Then they built another house down there at the farm, same place, and one burnt, and we moved back there. But Mom was always good, took me to church, and got me started in church, and Seeing that I went to Bible school each year. She's a pretty good mother. I miss her. She was real close to my daughter. Her and Hope was just real close. Of course, Jean was too. Jean was always close to mom. Good cook. Where did your father grow up? He, like I said, he farmed. Dad. Dad always ruled the roost. He whooped us once in a while. I can remember one time, I, I don't know, I must have been 10 or 12, Euless Cooper, which was no kin, a different Cooper, was working for us. We had horses and cattle at that time, and I was sitting on the rail the fence, and the horse jumped him. We was trying to catch a horse, Euless was, and it jumped the fence and took off across the field. I had a hand strap in my hand. Dad told me, I mean, Euless told me, he said, go tell your dad that damn horse jumped the fence. I went in there and told him, Daddy whooped me all the way back to the barn with a hand strap. Of course, it, he didn't hurt me none. I probably needed it. <clears throat> but uh, Dad and Mother both loved to fish. They'd done a lot of fishing. They spent a lot of time in Okeechobee in their later years. Dad was a great hunter. He'd done a lot of hunting. 
and made us a good living farming and got in church now, I don't know several years before I'm talking about that's where I'd left home Mary Jean my dad didn't join the church and I was proud of that and he's still a member of First Christian Church here at Wiener and still a living and still dancing he'd be 91 in March and goes to dance with us twice a week and them widow women loves him to pieces. They just, in fact, once in a while there'd be one dancing with him and another would come over and sit down in his seat so she could have the next dance. It's, it's hilarious. He loves it. <laughs> What's something you would like to meet in? like me to know about your dad? Not talk louder. <clears throat> What's something that you would like me to know about your dad? Well, he's kind of talked about him. Yeah. So you can go ahead and skip that one. All he's right. already done that one. Right. He's done that one. The number 13. Right. What are some important things you've learned yeah. from your parents? What are oh. some of the important things? What are some of the important things you've learned from your parents? Well, that's kind of be bragging on yourself, wouldn't it, when you yes. learn something? Dad, Dad and Mother both taught me to respect my elders and to go to church, pray, and I learned a whole lot from Dad about farming. I'd always... I've been, I'm trying to make my 54th crop this year. I've made 53 of them, and of course, Dad has helped us through a lot of it. Of course, like I said, Mother was real good to me. She never did whoop me that I know of. But Dad, Dad taught me quite a bit about living. What were the names of your grandparents on your mother's side? On my mother's side, Alpha, yeah. Alfred Ingram and uh, Vera Ingram. What did they do for a living? They was farmers, some, um, this small type, raised a lot of livestock and stuff back in those days. I remember Grandpa and Grandma was great Baptists. They, they really preached a lot to us, Gene and I, when we was younger, about church. and They was, they was really good Christian people in the Cooper and Haynes Church over where they lived, just about three miles east of Cooper and Haynes. But they were, remember Grandpa and his pipe? He had that pipe in his mouth all the time, and Grandma, she kind of dipped snuff once in a while, which was about normal back in those days. But they always treated us good and had some good meals with them. What do you most remember about them? Their religious life, mostly. They went to that Cooper and Haynes church out there. Yeah, they went to Cooper and Haynes and was backbone of it at that time. Grandpa and Grandma was. Can you tell me a story about your maternal grandparents? Can you remember, uh, uh, can you remember a story about your mom's parents, something that happened when you were a boy? Not really. Okay. That's been too long ago. I got a picture of that old Cooper and Haynes church, the, or the oh, school, uh -huh. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, gotten pictures of a lot of those old schools that are around here, the Yukonaw school, mm -hmm. school at Yukonaw. Yeah. I got a picture of Beautiful Home, a uh, picture of the Maumee School, which was uh, across the road from the old Sydney house that they're getting ready to tear down there on the highway. Mm -hmm. I don't there remember a, that. Not, that's where Unimai went for uh. a while. She went there for a couple of years. I have a picture of that one. 
the, the one I haven't gotten a hold of yet is uh, there was a school where Oral Redmond lives. And I haven't gotten a picture of that one yet. Okay. What were the names of the, your grandparents on your father's side? I don't remember my grandmother Cooper. My grandpa Cooper was Charlie. Cooper is all I knew. I just barely remember him. I remember he had a handlebar mustache. And uh, I know my grandma Cooper, they said passed away when Uncle Roy was born. And Uncle Roy is mm -hmm. 87. So I don't, I don't remember her any. I remember I had some pictures of him, but I do remember Grandpa Cooper and his handlebar mustache. They lived out about five miles out east of Wiener on the Swan Pond Road and uh, lived with Uncle Roy and Aunt Gladys. And Aunt Mary at the time was staying with them. And I remember going out there and spending the night and visiting with Grandma Cooper, but that's about all I remember. What did they do for a living? At Grandpa and Grandma Cooper both had a little farm over here across by south of Cooper and Haines. And they just raised hogs and cows and had a little cotton. I know Dad, I remember Dad talking about chopping cotton. And they just were small, I think 40 acres or so farmers. Um, what about your brothers and sisters? <laughs> what my about brother and sister. Well, my sister was married to Jerry Paul at one time and had two boys, wonderful boys, Keith and Kevin. And then uh, they divorced. And uh, she she's living at Cash now and helping take care of Dad. James, he comes down. He, he lives at Jonesboro. He's married to uh, Betty. Redmond used to be, and uh, they live in Jonesboro, and uh, he's selling automobiles, I think. My sister lives at Cash. He, he comes down on Sunday and takes care of Dad. We have to go over to Dad's every day, three times a day, and make sure he takes his medicine and stuff. He's kind of got the early stage of Alzheimer's. And, Nine years old. <laughs> and he's, but he's doing healthy-wise. I think he's as healthy as he's been in his life. But... That's about it. James D. farmed for several years, uh, and uh, the farm kind of changed hands, and he got out of that. And that's about it. They're both younger than I am. Sis is, uh, there's seven years difference in us. How did you all get along when you were growing up? Yeah, we got along all right. I, uh, my, Wilma, my sister, her and Glenda Blair at that time, which was my wife's younger sister, they'd play hooky once in a while in school, and Mama or Miss Blair, one would call me and have me go hunt them up, and I usually knew where to find them. But uh, we got along real good. And James, he never did. He was younger than I am, and so never did have no problem with him. He kind of drove me and my girlfriends around some when we was dating. What did you do together for fun? When you were growing up. Oh. Well, before I really got running around, <laughs> We'd go to Grundon's a whole lot and dance and played a lot of baseball. Daddy managed the baseball team for several years here in the Wiener baseball team, and I went with him to the baseball games on Saturday and Sunday. That We went to the movie, and that's about it back in those days. And then as I grew older and got out of high school, well, I started honky-tonking quite a bit. And I'd done that until I got married. <laughs> That put a stop to that. <laughs> Me and Bobby Joe Hughes usually went every night someplace. On Sunday night, we'd go to the Plantation Inn in West Memphis. It's the only place open. 
Where would y'all go the other time? We'd go to the Silver Moon, Cotton Club, Jarvis's. Where were those places at? I know. Cotton Club was at Truman, and uh, C&R Club was at Truman. Silver Moon and Jarvis's and Porky's was at Newport. And the Plantation Inn was West Memphis. That was on a Saturday night deal. But Bob Joe Hughes and I, we we was out about every night. <laughs> but like I said, I got married, and that put a stop to that. <laughs> Thank goodness. What's the most trouble you've ever been in when you were young? And what did your parents do when they found out? Well, I don't know what my parents ever found out. Parents really want to hear about this one. One night, Laverne and me and Junior Duncan, I believe Rama Joe Ashcraft was with me. Frenchy's wine. We'd always go by. Frenchy was lived here in town, and that he made wine, blackberry wine. We kind of got a little loaded one night. Of course, I was airplane pilot. We went down to the airport, and there's a little old cub sitting there, belonged to Bob and L. V. Bruner. We uh, got it started. I was gonna fly it. We had it untied. But it's sitting in holes. They had holes for the wheel to sit in. Every time I'd give it the gas, it'd stand up on its nose. We'd pull it back down, start it. Finally broke the prop. That got us in trouble. That's probably the biggest trouble I was ever in. And Mother and Dad knew about it later. After I got that Bob and LV, we didn't even tell them for years. It hung on the wall down there for years with a big question mark in it. Is that right? <laughs> We finally admitted up to it, and they didn't even do nothing then. So long, they thought it was funny. <laughs> they had, so they had that with a big question mark. On yeah, it. I had a right in the center, had a broken prop, and had a big question mark on it. You don't guess you ever got a picture of that prop down here with that question no. mark? That no. No, I was kind of ashamed of that. <laughs> I didn't want to think too much of that anymore. But that's probably one of the biggest. Dad, I don't. A lot of times, I'd stay out two or three o'clock. We'd set up here at town and visit or go a lot of times we'd go up jump the hills up there on that old Cro Crowley's Ridge just south of Jonesboro and them old ro gravel roads while we'd roll the coast at in my car but we'd sit around and I'd get in about two or three o'clock and daddy'd have me up at five to go to work <laughs> yeah do you remember ever getting in trouble when you were a little boy do you remember anything you must did when you were little not that I know of. I remember one time that I got scared when I was little. What happened then? Mr. Sam Berger was building a chicken house down at the house, and I was out there with him, fooling around like a little kid would, and he had one of his epileptic fits. Mm -hmm. And we had it about built, or I say he had it about built, and the next thing I knew it was tore down. Oh, <laughs> he wow. had one of his lips, and that scared me about as much as anything. But most of the time, I didn't get in much trouble when I was small. Like I said, that one time, Daddy whooped me all the way back to the barn with a whip because a horse jumped the fence. But <laughs> what did the house look like? Uh, the house you lived in look like when you were a child? Did you move around much? Yeah, it was a two-story house, like I said earlier. It, we were down here uh, south of Winter, about two miles. It's down about where the airport is now. We are half a mile over in the field. It was a two-story house. had a big screen back porch, I remember that, and upstairs and everything. That, and then it burnt, and uh, they come back and built another pretty night at that time with a real nice four room, five room house. It had two bedrooms, three bedrooms and a kitchen living room on it. And then, uh, Is that house still out there? No, they tore it down and rebuilt. They built a really nice house there 
in the same location, but it's not there. Tell me about the first funeral you remember attending. Well, it was Pop Haynes, and I can't tell you the year, but it was at, buried him at the, which is now Walker Cemetery, and they hauled a casket up in a wagon and team. And it didn't go up the road that goes up there to Walker Cemetery. Now it went up through the woods, and they got the wagon team bogged down and had to pack the coffin on in about, I was about halfway up in there by Uncle Earl's house and up through there by uh, Crafts, Ronald Crafts, who went up through the woods up in Roger. And I remember that just as plain as if it was yesterday. I remember bogging down and them men having to pack the, I don't know, I must have been eight or nine year old. I wasn't very old, but they had to pack the casket up there. To, I remember that. I remember, like I said, the team and horses hauling up there. Uh, what, how different, oh, I know that it's a remarkable difference, but what's the difference in the woods that are around now as to what was around oh, then? What do you remember? Lordy, they was, well, when we moved out to uh, the Claypool farm in uh, 61, 62, we cleared 700 acres of ground out there while I was farming that. There was only uh, like 600 acres of it farm over land. We moved there and about the first three or four years we cleared 700 acres. We had 1,300 acres of cleared land. Down at Dad's when I was growing up, all in there by uh, barn huffs, they was, Dad had I think 300 and some acres on that 1,200 acres. Barn huffs had 300 acres of woods there. I'm talking about just east of the highway. That was all woods in there and hunting and stuff. Dad used to take me over to Cooper and Haynes and take me up to crafts up there. I'd get out and I'd hunt down through the woods and I'd stop by uh, Grandma and Grandpa Ingram's and have dinner and go on down to Uncle Arthur and Aunt Lily's down south and eat in mid-afternoon and come out on the lower road up down there. And Dad and them picked me up. I'd go by Stuart Brown's when he lived back there in the woods raised his family on a one-room house back there on a ridge in the woods, dirt floor. Is that but, right? Yeah. Back, I'm farming that ground now. It's O.R. Trotters. And I'm farming it. But they, they was right out in the middle of the woods. They had a path from the south road up through the woods to their house and had a dirt floor and a one-room house. He raised what, four kids there, four kids, I believe, and they turned, all of them turned out to be good kids. Stuart and Velma was a good, good people. How, how, when they cleared all that land, uh, how'd they do that? Most of it, was in, in my time, been done with dozers. Okay. Now, Dad, I've heard Dad and them talk about cross-cut saws, and I, mm -hmm. I did uh, cut stumps once with an A-model stump saw that was on a sled, had an A-model engine on it, and a stump. They called it a tree saw, but I cut stumps with it one time. But most of it was done with dozers and stuff. <coughs> they could just push them all, push them, push them all over, cut them all off and push them over and they'd cut them off at the ground with stumps. I'm talking about the cutter bladders would cut them off and then they would pile them and burn them. They'd been millions of dollars of lumber burn up in this country years mm -hmm. ago. Then what did you do with the stump that was left? It rotted out. Now later on in the later years, you took, they come out with a stump grinder and we'd grind them out and turn them around. Mm -hmm. But back years ago, well, you bounced over them with them steel wheel tractors and just left them. Yeah. Just kept a lot of equipment tore up mm -hmm. your discs and stuff, mm -hmm. tear mm -hmm. them up. But back, that was mostly, like I said, we've, the worst part about new ground, what we call new ground, fresh year ground, was trying to harvest it. We, uh, we, it was awful soft. Jack and I, wound up with uh, tracks on our combines and running. And we bought them out of Illinois and put them on. You know, like a bulldozer track? Like, yeah, it was just track. They still had the huh. steering wheels on the back, but had 
half tracks on them. And when we got them two sets of tracks, put one on jacks and one on mine, and every time I come to the levee, I'd get stuck, and Jack wouldn't. And it took me about two days to figure out what happened. He had one more pad, longer tracks than I did, and when he'd cross that levee, his would catch outside the levee fur, and mine hit right in that levee fur and just keep going. The stag bogged down. But uh, we cleared a lot of ground and picked a lot of chunks up in my days. I started, uh, well, I, start, I had 200 acres of soybeans when I was in the 10th grade over at C.O. Pinky Roberts Farm at that time. It's called a Botts Farm. Sonny Northworthy and I had 200 acres of beans, and I've been at it ever since. I've had a little farming going on for 50, this 53 years. <coughs> Were your parents strict? I'd say no, not real strict. They, uh, I, they was pretty lenient with me. I done told you I done all that running around and everything, and they didn't. I'd say no, they was not real strict. Did you have any chores? What did you do? I had several chores when I was in school. I remember having to pack in wood every evening in the winter time. And of course, in the summertime, Dad was working me. I when I was five year old, I'd drawn a dollar a day for driving tractor. I, I drove tractor. Tommy Walford tells a story now about me sitting in the wheel of the old steel wheel Model E's crying because it wouldn't let me ride with him when I was four. But Tommy tells that story. But I pretty well drove tractor all my life. And like I said, I'd drawn a dollar a day when I was five year old. In 1942, Dad got a brand new A model tractor, and uh, I can remember he put it out on the dirt road at that time. That dirt road run angling down through there at the farm, and I drove it home. How did you reach everything? I stood on a bucket most of the time. A lot of times, people say say they just see a tractor coming and didn't think there was any driver on it, and there I was. Dad and them would, well, Dad and Tommy and all of them, they'd push a clutch in. I wasn't big enough to push it, had a hand clutch at that time. Push a clutch in, they'd push a clutch in for me and then jump off. Of course, at that time we didn't have but six foot equipment, so it wasn't hard to get out of the way. And you didn't, you wasn't traveling no five mile an hour either. We were doing about a mile. Yeah. But when I got ready to stop, I'd just pull the throttle back and kill it. <laughs> I'd done that many times, they said. And the boys always said if there's a mud hole in the field, I could find it. <laughs> what did your family do to have fun together? They played a lot of cards, pitch and rook and spades and that stuff. They, uh, Uncle Earl Walker and Aunt Emma and, of course, Buster and Luella Fryman played about every night. Dad and Mother loved to dance, like I said. They'd go dancing quite often, and now that's about it. Of course, Dad done a lot of hunting and fishing, and Mother, mother loved to cook, so she done a lot of cooking. I guess that was fun. What would you kids do while they were playing cards and doing all that stuff? Now, watching TV, uh, TV, listening to radio or something. I can remember years ago sitting in front of that radio and listen to the squeaking door opening up oh. it is on the radio it is kind of a scary story what was it? I don't heard it tell us about the squeaking door well, it's just mostly scary stories it's kind of like your tv programs nowadays and every time it started where well, they'd have that door they on the radio you'd hear it squeaking coming open huh. and it's scary sound and i listened to it i can remember sitting in the living room listening to it a lot the first tv we got was about a by, I don't know, eight inch screen, I guess, and that was something to sit and watch. Yeah, little old bitty thing. You watched when our programs were on. Do you remember any of them that you've watched TV programs? Uh, 
No, not really. Can't think of them right now. I remember some of the characters, and I can't think of their names. <laughs> but it wasn't much. Did you ever have any family pets? I had a dog. I had a horse that was real close to. Uh, had a dog called Shep. He was a little collie dog. He was real close to me. And uh, my horse, I had done a lot of riding, ride it to town and stuff. That's the way we had to go in then. Hit stumbled and fell in the dirt road and broke my collarbone. I remember that. Right after I had a big brace on down the side and arm stuck up and had a rod stuck out that end. I was sitting on the couch one night after that and Jamesy jumped up, sat out on that rod and like cut me in two. I remember that thing. <laughs> but uh, that's about it. Back in those when I was little, I've had several dogs, hunting dogs that I like. What medicines or remedies do you remember as a child? Mainly at Vic Sav and something they'd rub and put on your chest. A hot cloths they'd put on you for cold and stuff. That was about it. Mother never did give us much. She never did have much old remedy. We pretty well went to the doctor at medicine. But I do remember colds and stuff we have at old Vic Sav and they'd heat it and rub it and put it on a hot cloth and put it on your chest. Can you remember a time in your uh, when someone in your family was very sick or hurt? No, I guess I've been very fortunate there. I remember when Mother passed away, we was out in Lake Okeechobee fishing. She was sitting in front of the boat. Chester sent me and I was fishing. Beside them, we were down in Florida, Lake Okeechobee, about 15 miles out in the lake. That was a long boat ride back to the landing. Jean was in the room whenever we got back there. She, we were in a motel room. Dad and them was in a travel trailer, but we had a motel room right there on the dock, and she could hear us hollering when we come through the gates coming in there. Of course, doctors said that she'd have been in the hospital. It wouldn't have been nothing they'd done. She was catching crappie, and we was fishing. It was real early in the morning, and uh, I don't think she ever knew when she slid out of the seat and hit the bottom of the boat, which is some good that you go that way rather than lay around with something. But comes my time, that's the way I want him to take me. But that's about it. And I remember Aunt Lily. I went to Tumbling shows and visited Aunt Lily, and at that time, Gene and I was, um, I don't know where you'd say we was any closer to the Lord than what we are now, but it was right after I was joined the church, and I remember Aunt Lily asked me to pray for her, and I remember that prayer that, with her, on, and she died about two hours later. Hmm. I remember that pretty well. That's about it. Was there a doctor? Huh? Was there a doctor? No. When you were in elementary school, what was your school like? Ask it again, please. Uh, when you were a child in elementary school, um, what was your school like? It was great. I had 
course, some of my teachers are still living today. Miss Martha Hibbard, she was my first grade teacher. Miss Cashman was my third grade teacher. And Miss Daughter, Martha Daughter, was my fifth grade teacher. That was the year I had my arm broke. Uh, sixth grade. I don't know. Yeah, Miss May, fifth grade. Miss May was my fifth grade teacher. And uh, had Miss uh, Edith Leach, one of them, third now, where, grade. Where was the elementary school then? Was it in the new building or was it in the old building? Oh, it was in the old building. Okay. We didn't, we just had the one building at the time I was in school. So was the grade school downstairs? The grade upstairs? school was downstairs in about uh, four or five rooms. I believe they had fifth and sixth grade was together. And it seemed to me like the second, first, second and third, I don't know. It seemed to me like it was two classes that was together during my elementary school time. But I had some good teachers, sweet teachers. Was there a lunch room? Not, I think there was a lunch room when we got in the sixth grade. I believe we took our lunches to then. I'm not positive. Can you think of a story that happened when you were in grade, sto grade school? Not so much grade school. Uh, Can you think about, who did you play with in grade school? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. They tell, was, about, tell about that. Well, I was the run of the class. When I graduated from high school, I was four foot ten and a half inches tall. Wore size seven shoe. When you graduated? When I graduated from high school. I cannot believe that. I grew 23 inches after Gina and I got married. I'm not 23, I grew 3 inches. I was 23 year old and I grew 3 inches after Gina and I were married. But I, I wore daddy's slipper to grade school, which was, I mean, graduation, which was size 7. Huh. I wear a 10 now and I was almost 6 foot. And you were, a I guess, repeat, you were a four half, foot ten and a half inches tall. When you graduated. When I graduated. Grew, oh, I've heard men doing that. I've got some pictures, huh. and Jean and Joanna were in the eleventh grade, and I was senior, and I'm sitting there with my hands up on their shoulders like that in school. But I was a runt, and then George Albert and Bill Freeman, Richard Chip, Bobby Joe Hughes, they'd always pick on me. We was always fighting. Jim Sorry took up for me. He was in my class. If it hadn't been from a few of the ladies in high school, I'd probably still be there. <laughs> they took care of us. <laughs> At that time, I had Henry Wilson as a history teacher, an English teacher, and I couldn't have passed it with nothing. But I could carry him a couple of ducks and I could make it I always duck hunted so I could carry him a couple of ducks, but had some good teachers. Uh, they was real good to me. Miss Cashman was probably the strictest teacher I had in grade school. What do you remember about Miss Murth? Miss Murth was always sweet and always had and still sweet. She was always good to us kids. Uh, and like I said, she's still sweet every time I see her. I can, hug her and she, she's just a darling and she was good in school. She did, Like I said, I think Miss Cashman was the strictest teacher I had. Uh, of course, when we got on up in high school, uh, we had a little problem with some of the teachers. But. He's going to ask you about those. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll the next one. What did you do in the summer when you didn't have any school? I worked most of the time. Dad had me working on the farm. We, uh, like I said, we farmed, and I, I worked most of the time. I was driving a tractor or something, putting in spills, which at that time we had tow sack spills for 
rice levies or shoveling rice levies. That had me doing something about all summer long. What kind of toys do you remember playing with as a child? That little red wagon one time, remember that? That was about it that I can remember. Had BB guns and that kind of stuff. Had cowboy little pistols and stuff played with all the time. Laverne and I, they stayed with us a lot. Uncle Earl was in the Navy. Laverne and I fought all the time, and his nose, I could just look at him, and his nose just breaking, bleeding. He just, he had a bloody nose about all the time. And we were scuffling all the time and stuff, and he'd have a bloody nose. It seemed like we rode the bus a lot of times from home. We'd start home, and he'd wind up with a bloody nose before we got walked to the house. <laughs> Did you have a special hiding place whenever you were little? Not really. Played a lot in the old barn. We'd get out there and play a lot in the hay and stuff. We had a barn, had cattle and horses when I was growing up, and a tornado come through and blew my barn away. Did have a loft and everything? Had a loft and everything. Had this. Just not no special hiding place, I don't guess. I remember one time me and Laverne went out in a bean field right in the outside row and had a pack of cigarettes and smoked them. That's about the only place I hid I know of. <laughs> Do you remember hearing any stories about Joe Bruner? Stories is all I remember. I'm talking about just how mean he was and stuff to his family, and that's about all. I asked uh, Kiefer, Mike Kiefer the other day if the cemetery was still out there, and he said, yeah, they said the stones were said One of the stones was broke, but it was still there out there, and that's about all I remember the stories, what people told me. Tell me about a friend that you had as a child. As a child? Where's child start? I'm still a child. <laughs> uh, I, like I said, Bill Freeman and... Who was Rick, your favorite friend that you had when you were young? When I was real young, probably uh, Laverne, because we was together so much. Probably Laverne. We was... He's a couple of years younger than me, but we was together all the time and played together and stuff. He was probably my best friend at that time. Right now, I couldn't tell you which one's the best. I got so many. Tell me about a child that you remember that you disliked. A child that I disliked? Yeah. Ooh. I don't know of any that I did dislike. Not just dis just didn't like them. I just I, I didn't want to know of any. Never had no enemy that I know of. How did your family celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, we had a big Thanksgiving dinner. Most of the time had, there'd be three or four families to get together and have dinner. And it was always great to have Thanksgiving dinner. Did your mom fix beans on Thanksgiving? No, I imagine she did, some kind of beans. Because just about every day we had beans. That was dad and the family's. And at that time, you could buy 25-pound beans pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. That was cheap eating. Did y'all uh, uh, always have turkey or did you have duck sometimes? Oh, we had duck. And we didn't have turkey very much. It's mm -hmm. mostly duck, and we had country ham a lot, you know. 
that time turkeys was pretty scarce. I'm talking about they cost money. It wasn't that plentiful. Sweet potatoes, always had sweet potatoes. Love candied yams. How do you remember doing on Halloween? Uh, how do you remember? Oh, what, what do, you... do I remember? Ooh. <laughs> Tell because they don't really have fun on Halloween like we used to. No. Mm -hmm. no we, uh, <laughs> I've been in several little Halloween deals. The worst one we got into that I know of, well, we used to string a wire up on the school bell and set out in the cemetery and rang the bell and make law hunt us up. I'm talking about it, just run him crazy. But the worst thing I ever done at Halloween and got, if they'd have found out about it, I'd have been in big trouble. There was a bunch of us boys went up Buster Fryman's and got a 55 gallon barrel of waste oil and carried it down to the school and poured it on the steps oh of the front door. Well, it run down the hall, went under the door and run down the hall. That didn't sit good with Mr. Guy French. It didn't sit good at all, and he never did find out about who done it, I don't guess. We finally, people around knows it now, but back then when we were in school, they didn't know about that. And then Fisher come up here in the ninth grade school, and we were big buddies in, Dale Houchin and Charlie McRichardson. Dale Houchin got to shooting street lights that one Halloween night. We like to got in trouble over that deal. And I was just along. I wasn't doing none of that. I was just along. But we was pretty ornery. We took a wagon part one time. That's when John Deere was right beside Buster Fryman. We took a wagon apart, put it back together on top of Buster Fryman service station. <laughs> Next morning there was a John Deere wagon sitting up on top of his service station. We, we pulled some pretty good pranks back when we were little. Did you trick or treat when you were children? No. Okay. No, it wasn't no trick or treat. And we was in meanness. We wasn't in <laughs> after candy. We was just mean. You weren't after anything sweet. No, we was just mean. <laughs> Do you remember Halloween Town Hall in Greenville? What was Christmas always like when you were a child? Christmas was always good. We uh, we had socks hanging, and we usually get them filled. Santa Claus come, brought us stuff, and it was always pretty good. I always had Christmas dinner, family all together, and everything. It was Christmas was always good. I want to ask you a question. Do yeah. you remember them having a community Christmas tree at the gym? No, I don't, Trisha. Okay. Don't mean it. They didn't have one in my time. I don't remember. Okay. Tell me a story. Story about a Christmas memory you had. Oh. Well, not as a child. I don't have any memories. Small time. It was, like I said, there's always a good Christmas. We all got together and eat. I really don't I have no memory. Do you have a favorite Christmas uh, memory from just uh, even after you grew up? Yes. Uh, okay. The first year we was in the First Christian Church, we decorated it, and it was absolutely beautiful. And I remember how pretty it was and how touching the scene was and how it brought back memories of Christ and the birth and stuff, and it was really good. Can you tell me a story about a birthday you had as a child? No. Birthdays was all about the same, I guess. I always got birthday gifts, and that's about it. I don't remember any special... Did boys have birthday parties? Not that I remember. 
Not, I never did have a party that I know of. Do you? Uh, yeah, did you remember Wilma having a birthday party? When she was, no. You don't? Okay. Remember having a lot of bunking parties, but mm -hmm. no special birthday mm -hmm. party, nothing. Okay. Uh, what was high school like for you? High school was pretty tough on me because I was pretty dumb. But now nah, it's just the way we was. We just didn't care. Uh, it was good. Uh, remember a lot of my teachers. Mr. Catterton, I believe, was the most strict and roughest teacher I had. He didn't mind whooping you at the time. At that time, you didn't go to see principal or superintendent. You got it right there in the room. He had a paddle board paddle that had holes in it, just about two foot long and about six inches wide, up where he hit you with. And you, that hand, it would sting that hand. He'd bust that hand. Mm. Mr. Catterton was a pretty tough teacher. Of course, still respect him a lot today. And uh, remember, Miss Rainey was a typist. She was out of Jonesboro, and she was a funniest little old lady. At that time, we thought she's old, which she probably wasn't 30, 40 year old. But uh, she was our typing teacher. And of course, Henry Wilson was our English teacher. And what, tell about Henry. What did you think about him? About Henry. He, that was some Henry. He, he, he was pretty easy to get along with. Like I said, I wouldn't pass grade. I could carry him a couple ducks and I'd get a passing grade. And uh, he he was funny. He taught the girls all liked him. He was sweet on the girls. But if it hadn't been for some of the girls in high school, I'm afraid our boys would have been in trouble. Uh, Annette White and uh, like I went blank. I'm Rama Joe's wife, Flora Jean, Flora Jean Strickland at the time. Helped me a whole lot in school. And of course, Mel French was in our class, which was a mm -hmm. superintendent's daughter. We could get by with a lot of stuff that some of the other classes couldn't get by with. Lefty Amon was our coach. Played, I wasn't much of a basketball player because I was too small, but we played a lot of basketball. And he'd run us through a belt line. If you got in trouble while well, your other boys lined up out on each side and you went through there with their belts off. And they'd slap in you with a belt as you went You're, through it. Is that right? Yeah. You don't remember that? I've never heard that before. Uh -uh. Yeah, they'd line up down the side and you'd run through a belt line. We'd done a lot in the gym and huh. we'd done a lot outside on the sidewalk. Huh. He'd, he'd put you through the, the boys pull their belts off and you'd run, they'd stand about three or four foot apart You'd have to run through that belt line and get punished. Hmm. We, he, he had a lot of belt lines. Hmm. Had a, we, at that time, the prom was, it was outstanding. We all looked forward. Of course, that was junior and senior year, but we always had a good time. I remember the, when we was juniors, they had a, we going to have a dance. And the girls, Flora Jean and uh, Marceda and Annette and all of them got a bunch of us boys together and going to teach us how to dance. Well, we danced, but I don't know how much we knew about it, but we danced at the farm and uh, had a good time. Of course, senior trip, we always took a senior trip. We went to uh, Walcott a couple of times, and we got in trouble up there with some boys from uh, Blyville at Walcott one time. and. Bobby Cox and Jim Sorry and Bobby Joe Hughes were pretty good sized boys. They could take care of us. And we didn't have, they didn't pick on us too much. We usually come out on top when we'd get in a fight. When y'all went on your senior trip, did y'all go up there? Did you spend the night at Walcott or what? No, but that was just one of the trips. We went to. Uh, Where did you go? Uh, you go to Rockaway Beach? Rockaway Beach. Thank you. Yeah, Rockaway Beach. That's where we went on our senior trip at that time, and I think that's where classes before and after me went. How long did y'all stay up there? You I believe it was two days. I'm not sure. I know 
I don't know whether it was a time we was up there on our senior trip or another time I was up there, but it rained something awful. And uh, creeks and everything got up and we couldn't go nowhere. We had to stay in the cabin. And that may have been, I don't, it may have not have been on our senior trip. Tell me something about a teacher you really liked. Teacher that I really liked. High school. Well, I don't know of any one special one I really liked in high school. Uh, like I said, we weren't too interested in high school at that time. We were just trying to get by. Tell me about a teacher you didn't like. <laughs> I said, like I said, I didn't uh, didn't didn't really care much in high school about any of them because I wasn't too concerned about it. But probably my one that was the hardest on us was Mr. Catterton. He he was pretty tough on us, and uh, at that time I didn't like him. Of course, what did, I, he, what did he teach? It seemed me like it was algebra, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, since then, I've kind of learned to respect him some, you know, my elders. But at that time, he was pretty tough on us. Do you remember the Halloween carnivals at school? Oh, yeah. What, what do you remember about that? Well, I remember the apple dunking. They always had a tub full of apples you went for. And, uh, Always had a scary house you went in, and I had a fishing little pole you fished over behind the curtain, and somebody put something on for you. Yeah, they had the Halloween carnivals in the gym at that time. Now I want to ask you about well, your. Uh, now I want to ask you about your social life when you were a teenager. Social um, life. That, yeah. That I kind of touched on that earlier, didn't I? on our running around and stuff. Uh, done quite a bit of running around, but when I was, when I graduated, I uh, drove truck one winter for Roy Wiles. No, it was from, uh, it was for Robert Barnhuff at that time. Made a trip to New Mexico after load, went hauled a load of soybean meal out and picked up a load of onions and hauled back. I remember that. We went all over New Mexico and picked up onions and went to New Orleans to unload. Well, C.F. Harrison and I was driving together, and we got in there on Friday and had to spend a weekend, and that was a wild weekend in New Orleans. But we got unloaded and got out of there and loaded a load of potash in Georgia and had a blowout and run around. Just had to spend a night in Georgia one night. But anyway, we was going about two weeks in them old gas burner trucks at that time out west. Then I done a lot of dozer work. I worked, run heavy equipment for Oliver Matthews and uh, Solomon. I run one for Solomon. Cut a lot of timber with a dozer, old dozer. I remember I was working for Solomon and Bill and a levee down at uh, uh, Mallard Pond, and it had an old seven, and I broke it half and two, hung it on a tree root, and raised the braid, and broke the engine half and two in it. He didn't like that too much. And then I run around with a lot of girls. Like I said, we had a lot of. When you guys uh, would run around like that, did you take any girls go with you, or is it? Just oh you yeah, uh -huh. oh yeah. We went. Bobby Joe and I dated girls and Joan Burr and. Tuckerman and Grubbs, and we just pretty well made all the rounds. And of course, that was before I met my sweet wife. But uh, we'll get to that because I want to find out how in the world she rings you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have a curfew? No. 
They tried to, but I didn't pay no attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Daddy tried to put a curfew on me about getting me up. I might be in bed 30 minutes and getting me up in time to go to work or something. But And I just swear, oh, I'm going to bed tonight about dark while them old eyes come and walk and away we'd go again. <laughs> I think it's funny. Don't you know he grinned inside when he'd get you up oh, at 5 o'clock? Oh, 5 o'clock, me. Say, Charles, time to go work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go Tell me about what you remember. Tell me what you remember about Grundens. Oh, Grundens was a wonderful place. We... I mostly danced when I went to Grundon. We'd done a lot of swimming, but uh, that was about halfway point from the girls at Valley View at Aqua and stuff. I remember Jeannie, of course it's Jeannie Roberts now, married to Bill Roberts, but her and her sister, can't think of her sister's name right now. But Gay. Gay, yeah. We'd done a lot of a lot of dancing up there, and uh, of course Raymond Phillips' wife was big Grundon person. Usually there was always a fight on Sunday somewhere around Grundon's, but there'd be a hundred or so people at Grundon's every weekend. Yeah. Where were they from? Everywhere? Every, they just from? Mostly Valley View and Otwell, and I don't remember too many from Harrisburg. Hick Ridge and, and Fisher had a lot of people at that time. Grubs, there's a lot of people from Grubs hmm, was awesome. in there. And, well, tell me what it looked like. Well, it was, was just, the building was just a big, long, open building with screen. It wasn't closed building. It had screen on the side. It was strictly a summertime building. Uh, it had a dance floor, and, of course, he had a little place back there where he sold drinks and candy and stuff and had a jukebox most of the time it's jukebox music we played to dance did they ever have bands not that i know of i didn't ever remember a band being there uh the swimming pool had a big screen house out in the middle of the swimming pool that you could go under the screen and come up inside of course mosquitoes was bad and stuff in the summertime so that's the reason they had to screen house out in the swimming pool and it was big it had a diving board in it and it was a big place out in the swimming pool but it was always a crowd there on the weekends and sunday afternoon we'd go up there and just have a great big time dancing and having a good time did you ever go up there on the fourth of july i've heard people talk about that not that i know of i think that might have been over with by that time i think i don't not that i know of i don't remember that I'm quite sure there was a lot of picnics. They had picnic tables out and everything. What was the movie theater like when you were a teenager? <laughs> it was a little small building uh, up here, Rich Espy was the owner of it running. It had a balcony in it. Where that's where most of the blacks went was up in the balcony at that time. That was for segregation. And uh, had some good movies. Had some good dates there. That that, that time. Uh, Aldina Terry was my girlfriend at that time. She lived down on the, well on uh, Lake Road now at that time her dad run dogs fox hunted but I'd ride the horses over there and visit her after school and stuff did, did several people have horses you talk about riding the horses several people had horses around uh, I was always had a riding horse that mm -hmm. I rode when I first started riding why Louis Ciesler had a place up north of us up here, which is was Mike's dad, and which Mike is uh, Mickey's. Mickey's dad. But they they joined our farm down there. Louis did, and he always had horses. He had a little Palomino that spotted Palomino that I got started riding, and Dad got me one, and 
and went from that. 